many of us here, and thank you to all of those who are watching. You know what, we're all here and I can feel the energy in the room and it's for a good reason, right? Because it's not every single day that we get to have our board of directors in the audience for enough to speed, right? <laughs> more about them later on when I introduce Hans onto the stage. But before we get to that, I also have another special group in the audience that I want to give a shout out to. We've got our latest retail hires for the Atlantic and North is sitting over in this corner. Hello, hello, hello. We are going to hear from you a little later with Sam and learn more about how you're learning about Verizon and your first couple of days. I think you have only been here for about 30 days, which is awesome. So I can't wait to check in with all of you and shout out to all of you from Virginia. I talked to some of you earlier, I'm from Virginia, so appreciate that. All right, now, I know you all are waiting for Hans to get on and he's gonna talk about what he's been doing with the board, some business updates, and as promised, we'll get to some of your questions. So without further ado, Hans? Come on, please. Thank you, Raquel. Uh, hey, everyone, great to be here. If you're here live in Baskin Ridge, fantastic. If you're on the, on the streaming, great that you're viewing the up to speed today. We have a fairly packed agenda today, but I'm going to start with something a little bit different. I'm going to introduce a couple of V-teamers that you might not see that often and that's the board of directors. And they are very important for the company and how we're moving forward. So uh, I'm gonna introduce them one by one. Uh, I'm gonna start to the left here, Mark Bertolini. You can stand up. Mr. Mark Bertolini. Yeah. Uh, he's the CEO of Oscar Health before the CEO of Aetna. Rod this later. Uh, Rodney were the uh, uh, Secretary of Transportation and today working at a law firm. Vittorio Colau. Yeah. Vittorio was previously the CEO of Vodafone. Today he works with a couple of other challenges, but uh, he's a great asset to the board as well. <laughs> uh, uh, Shelley Archambault. Shelley uh, was previously the CEO of Metric Stream, but today in many of the prominent boards of the United States, of course, on our board as well. Dan Schulman. <laughs> uh, if you ever heard about PayPal, he is Mr. PayPal. He just stepped down. He has been the CEO of PayPal for many years. Uh, but today he's in, on different boards, of course, on our board. Uh, Carol Tomea. Carrie is running a small company called UPS. Uh, <laughs> they are delivering stuff if you're ordering stuff, yes, you know that. Next one up in the line is, of course, our lead director. Uh, the lead director has a special uh, sort of situation in the board. He's actually overseeing all the directors and, of course, overseeing me. So he is very, very important for the governance of the company. Laxman Nasrin. Uh, if you've ever been in the corner there taking a Starbucks, he's the CEO of Starbucks. Any problems, you talk to him. Uh, that's uh, our, all our board members, and we have two board members that are on video today because they have had some uh, uh, challenges with their health, so they are uh, actually on video. We have the board members here for actually three days. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit what we're doing. Yesterday, it's actually started with the women's event where we had our female lead, uh, directors being part of a conversation with Sam uh, in order to see what the directors are doing and their views, of course, with the great experience to have. Today, we have more about the committee meetings, but also we're gonna do a deep dive down in the cybersecurity with Nasrin, and we're gonna do a deep dive in uh, the responsible business with Rose. So this is two areas. And ultimately, we're gonna end up with NNT showing off all the technology and all the 5G things they have. Is that true, Joe? Absolutely. Uh, 
And at the end of the day, we're going to have a community dinner with many of our partners, our CEOs from, from the region, but also many of the banks and technology CEOs coming. Uh, that's what we're going to do on the other side of the bridge here. Tomorrow, we have a big day. We're going to go through the strategy for all our functions and also for the overall company. That's what we do every year when we have our yearly strategy review. Uh, so we have a full day from uh, morning to end of the day. It's going to be a lot of slides. Uh, I see how it's going to be great, uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> So uh, uh, where all our operation units, VGS, v VBG, VGS, uh, uh, VCG, all of them will go through the strategies and NNT, of course, and also uh, the brand part of it. So that's how, what we're going to do tomorrow. And then on Friday, we have, a, I would say, the final uh, board meeting. So it's actually three full pack day for the board, and they are extremely important for the success of the company. And uh, as you hear when I pr presented them, because I wanted to give you a feeling for the diversity and the strength we have in the board, in the competence they have and where they come from. Very different consumer, health, uh, heavy investments. Uh, so basically reflecting everything we're doing in our company. And that's very important for everything you do to have diversity of thoughts in order to do things better. So I'm extremely proud to have them here. We're spending time here at Baskin Ridge. We're going to be on the ridge uh, all these three days. And many of you have been part of preparing that. So thank you, everyone. We're looking forward to the next three days. But it's also happening other things in the company, so I have to do some updates at least. So uh, uh, you, you remember we, we took a great farewell of Jim Durace last week and also in the beginning of the year. And I told you we're going to have somebody replacing him soon. We have announced the replacement. And uh, I'm actually going to call up the replacement on stage. Uh, she probably have no idea, but we do it anyhow. Stacy, please. <laughs> Stacy is the latest hire, at least in my group. Uh, I think you have a week. Uh, it's third week. OK, third week, wow. Uh, and uh, uh, normally, we always bring up the new people reporting to me here in the beginning. Do you say a couple of words about their feelings, where they come from? Yes. Um, so first thing we're going to change is we're going to have Hans follow a script. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's going to be the hardest part of the communication strategy, I can tell you. But um, Hans, I'll, say, I'll share two things. OK. Um, one is thank you to all of the V-teamers uh, across the globe. February 1st, 2024 is a day I will hold in my heart and will fuel me forever. And that was the day, Hans, that you told V-teamers um, that I would be joining the company in a month. And the amount of love and passion for this company and commitment from V-teamers, from former V-teamers, from everyone who are, is part of the V-team community just poured so much into me. And I am so grateful for that. When we show that passion to our customers, we live into that mantra of unstoppable. So thank you for that. You know, already learned unstoppable. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, that, the first thing I asked for was for the it's unstoppable T-shirt. Quick, quick, um, quick learner. The second and last thing I will share is not only can you feel that passion, but this team puts that passion into action. And you all, if you have not seen one of the latest up to speeds, where Janine and her coworker Cleo, um, Janine for our board members. Um, gave her kidney to one of her colleagues that needed a kidney transplant. I mean, oh. that is... I, I get tears yeah, every time I'm, I hear that story. Yes. yes. I mean, that... That's amazing. If, if that doesn't demonstrate how connected yeah. this organization is, and then hopefully you've all seen that we are one of the most innovative companies um, by Fast Company because of the work of Verizon Frontline. Uh, yes. <laughs> Another example of putting our passion into action to help first responders and the people they serve. So I'm thrilled to be here three Good. weeks in um, and look forward to many, many years to come. Thank you, Stacey.
A couple of other things. Uh, it's been a packed quarter so far. It's not over yet, by so you know. There's a lot of things to do. Uh, remember the beginning of the year when they have the kickoff, we went over all the priorities. They are the same. And we just need to have relentless improvement constantly, and we need to do it sequentially. We have had a couple of improvements, but we're far away from where we want to be. And I'm not going to reiterate all the targets right now, because I know that that you have done in all the units uh, subsequent that we had the kickoff in the beginning of the year. But I just want to remind you, the success for us is to continuously improve right now, not uh, even thinking about slowing down. We need to keep up that speed we have right now. So that's very important. Uh, a couple of other things that happened in the quarter. I, last time I was on a big stage in front of the up to speed, they only bring me up now and then because they think I'm too talk too much. That was when we were in Las Vegas. You remember that? What happened in Las Vegas? It was a Super Bowl. It was a Super Bowl, yeah. The game, we leave that aside. But I think I have to thank so many people for our showing. All the way from the technology we built, we had an amazing performance on our network, and way more than 50% in the stadium were Verizon customers. And I can tell you, they had no problems to upload their TikToks or whatever they were doing. It was just an amazing performance. We had also a lot of conversations. We had the Verizon house. Uh, some of you might have seen, we had the ad spot. Have you seen it? was just amazing. Huh? The Super Bowl spot that we had is probably one of the best we've had. And I have to thank the communication and marketing department that worked together with the consumer group to get that out. And of course, we were proud to have Beyonce close to our brand. I think our brand is a little bit higher. Anyhow, <laughs> it was just an amazing event. So I have to thank so many people. At the same time, we also uh, released our uh, connection Consumer Report. I think that's the name. No, that's the wrong name. Uh, <laughs> it's the name of the Consumer Report we're doing. And that was the first one. And I think you should study it because it tells you a little bit how much usage is on the network. We had a couple of deep dives. One was in deep dives was in NFL. We compared different fans and different teams, how much they were using the network. It's just staggering to see how much they're using the network during a game. However, they're using 100% more data before halftime than in after halftime. Tells you a little bit about the game. In the beginning, you know, you send pictures and streams to all your family, and then it's getting a little bit more exciting. You stop doing it. Anyhow, our network is working all the time, so we're very, great, uh, uh, very uh, happy for that. Ultimately, uh, we also had a big showing at Mobile World Congress, which is the biggest uh, gathering of wireless technology in the world. I think Joe and his team came there with a lot of new innovation, and of course, we continue to evolve our technology. At the same time, I think Joe and his team got JD Powers Award for the 17th consecutive year or something like that. Yeah, sometimes I'm wrong. Good. Uh, and I'm probably forgetting half of what you have done this quarter, all of you. Uh, but it's important to remember our priorities, where we're going and what we're doing. And I'm thankful for whatever you have done so far. But there's more to be done. Uh, with that, I'm going to bring a friend up on stage. I think this friend at least knows that I'm going to bring her up. So Sam. Shout out again, because the energy over here to our newest new hire class uh, on the retail is outstanding. Outstanding. So I'm going to invite three of my friends up here in just a second, but let me tell you a little bit about this. There's nothing more important to this company than our customers, bar none. We need to obsess over our customers, over the experience that we strive to deliver every single day with every single customer but nobody does that more than our front line. So a huge thank you to all of our front line in the stores, in the fields, in the homes, outdoors, checking our equipment. That is what makes the heart of this company, and it's what truly delivers to us, to our customers, and the experience of all of us as, as the V team. So thank you for that. So let me tell you a little bit, though, about what this particular crew has been doing. They have been here just over four weeks. So, sorry, Stacey, you're still, you're still the newbie. These are now veterans. It's like all, just over a month. But they have spent the first couple of weeks in the store, immersive programs, on the floor training, uh, virtual training. They're now here. We call this the event. They are on site in their hub locations doing the event. Tons of more training where they can do security, um, lots of in-depth reviews, looking at the tech, how do they understand, deeply understanding our customers. 
So I'm super excited. I thought it would be an amazing opportunity for us to hear from them. So Jeremy, Cassidy, Ashton, come on up. Welcome. Hey, Ashton. Hey, Cassidy. Hey, Jeremy. Scoot on over. I don't want you falling over the edge. Um, welcome. Welcome. We are thrilled to have you. I thought it would be, you know, we have this thing here where we do 60 seconds. And it's a little bit of get to know people, and we film them and we air it. It's a little bit of a Verizon thing. Uh, I thought we'd do 60 seconds with each of you. And so share with us a, a little bit of, of your stories um, and what can we learn from you and what you've learned so far in, in this last month. So by the way, there's no rules, right? So just let it, let it fly. Feedback is a gift. Um, so I, let's start with introduce yourself. You know, where, where are you from? What's your name? What store? How is everybody doing today? <laughs> I love their energy. I love their energy. My name is Jeremy Flores. Um, I'm currently at the Washington Heights location. It's the upper NYC uh, area. And I... Great. Amazing. Cassidy. My name is Cassidy Cannon, and I am from the Lynchburg, Virginia location. Great. Uh, before I start, I want to say thank you for the opportunity and having all of us here. Uh, the event has been amazing so far. My name is Ashton Jaramillo. I'm from the Mansfield, Massachusetts location. I do want to shout out my managers that I have there because they've created a fantastic experience for me. So Leah Perry, Ryan Watts, and Daniel Foster, thank you guys for the, what you've given me so far. each one of you this question, and I'll start with you, Ashton, and then we'll kind of go down. Why Verizon? We're so lucky that you chose us, but what, what guided that choice? So I'd say like my biggest deciding factor was, one, I had the service with you guys, so I loved the, like how it was. Every experience I had in stores were always fantastic, so it kind of inspired me to be there. I was also involved with sales prior to, so it was just a very... Um, What's the word for it? Something that's very just easy to you because you're already like gone in that field. So that was like a big thing for me and it kind of led me to go towards where I was and where I am now and I'm really thankful for that. I love it, amazing. <laughs> Cassidy, what about you? The community, it's all family here. The minute I walked into the doors, my manager Karan, Latrice and Noah, they all treated me like I was one of them already and I cannot thank them enough. I love that, amazing. How about you, Jeremy? Well, for me, I chose Verizon for a lot of different reasons, but the most important reason I would say would be just to be a part of the most powerful wireless company. Um, I'm, I'm very competitive. I'm very competitive, and that's just my nature. <laughs> and I, I, I always want to win, and Verizon offers me that. And, like uh, Ashton, I've had Verizon too, and I've always loved the experiences that I've had with them. And I was able to compare as well throughout, you know, throughout my life, just you know, using services. And I always felt like every time I went into one of their stores, they took the time out with me. And you know, I, I always valued that because that's very important when you're spending your money. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I like competitive people, Jeremy. You're, you're, you're in the right place. Another thing that you had mentioned to me that what attracted you to Verizon was the opportunity to grow your career. And so I think uh, you're in the right spot for that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and even coming to the event, it really like reiterated what I already thought because I felt like us, you guys pouring into us, it really means a lot because not every company really does that. Like for us, I don't know, I can't speak about my teammates, but for me, this is like, I really feel valued. I really feel like they're really taking the time out to pour into the next generation of Verizon because if you guys are here right now and you guys have a long tenure from where you're doing, most of you, but us, we're brand new and we, we don't know where this is gonna take us and you guys are making us feel like we could end up where you are one day. I love it, I love it. Amazing. So, we've already established that you're veterans. Um, <laughs> one word that describes Verizon to you so far. Family. I love it. Always. 
I would have to go with integrity. So just how we work. Love it. I would have to go with innovation. Amazing. Amazing. What's, what's been the biggest surprise? I'll start with you, Ashton. Has, has anything surprising in, in your first you know, few weeks in onboarding experience? Uh, yeah, I'd say being here, uh, meeting Hans. <laughs> Prior to my one month mark, I would say that was pretty crazy, but like <laughs> just the overall experience of how it is here has been like amazing. Compared to anywhere else that I've been, this training experience has been something that like when I was told about it in the beginning, I was like, what? I was like, that's not how that works. I usually just sit on a computer in the back, but that's not how it is here. And I, I really appreciate that because that really helps us learn and be way more hands-on and it really just helps us be more successful. Yeah, amazing. There is so much provided to us for our success, and that was really surprising because not a lot of companies do that. They, you guys want to set us up for success, and we, it's all we can be. Yeah, yeah, amazing. We're successful because you set us up so well. I love it. And I don't think I mentioned, but in less than eight weeks, you're performing at the same as our most tenured thing. So, so it's a really fast experience to get you out with our customers, uh, which is where you want to be. So, Jeremy, what about you? Any surprises? Can you repeat the, the question? Uh, one has time? there been a big surprise, like, in, in this first few weeks for you? The biggest surprise, I would say, is the access to um, all these wonderful people that we have. You know, we're new, and sometimes companies try to hide the new people, but not you guys. <laughs> we're, all, we're all together here, and I look forward to maybe having some small talk with some of you and meeting some of you guys. Yeah. Jeremy did share to me, if, you, if you're going to have that small talk, ask him where he came from and what he thinks his first few weeks uh, here. Some good intel. Uh, competitive edge there. So my last question um, is, as you think about kind of this experience and going forward, I thought I would give you a little bit about this family, this V team. We have something that's going to be coming to you uh, in the next month here where we do an employee engagement survey. One of the questions that we ask is, do you have a best friend at work? So, have you well, found your work bestie? Well, I just want to also take this opportunity to also shout out my leaders, uh, Genesee Ramos <laughs> at Washington Heights, Brandon and Emily. You guys have done an amazing job in uh, pouring into me every single day. I know it's not easy with the tasks that you guys have on a day-to-day -day basis, but also keeping me in mind and my growth in mind. But um, it's funny because um, my first day ever at Verizon, um, I, I went to another location and um, I did meet somebody there that we, re we reconnected here at the training. So it was really nice and she's over there. <laughs> Shy, what's up? <laughs> I've definitely made some friends here, Bree, Claudia, but at my home store, Latrice and Chelsea all the way. I love it, I love it. Ashton? So here, I've definitely met a bunch of people. I've spoken to all you guys. I've taken some time out to just like introduce myself and speak with you. Um, I've been hanging out with like everybody, especially when we get back home to the hotel, we kind of try and talk. We want to try and like initiate with each other because this is like, we did this together and that's the biggest thing. But not only that, I want to thank like all my coworkers that I have at my home location because them putting up with me asking questions every two minutes for that first two weeks. I just want you to know that Lucas, Jim, Josh, all you guys that I miss you and I can't wait to be back home and working with you guys again. <laughs> call to action for all of us. Get out to your store. Go and cheer these people on, find out what they're working on, see the experience, um, and get close to them and close to our customers. So thank you. Thank you again, Jeremy, Ashton, Cassidy. I went through all the emotions. No, that was, yeah, it was <laughs> fantastic. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Spreading the love and the, the compassion for the company, being here so short time, you know, it's great. Great to see. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Um,
I'm going to change the script again, you know. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, okay. So I got the question when I was walking out there. So what is a lead director really doing? So as a lead director is here, uh, Clarence. Uh -oh. Clarence Otis uh, is the lead director, and as I couldn't really answer perfectly because I was listening, I, I actually asked Clarence, he's the lead director, he was the CEO of the Arnie Group before, uh, to just explain a little bit how he's keeping control over me. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> first thing I'd say is you all know that's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> but the second thing is really, really, we are delighted to be here. I mean, it's terrific to stand in front of you and, and be able to share this energy uh, we don't always get to do that, and so thank you for that. We appreciate it. Uh, secondly, in terms of lead director, it really is about the board of directors acting as a team. And so we're in a meeting. Hans can hear five or six different comments about a particular subject, seven or eight on something <laughs> else. And my job is to synthesize all of that and make sure that I'm communicating what we really mean to Hans, yeah. beyond all the different voices. And so that's a big, big part of it. And the other part of it is really just to continuously reinforce to Hans how much this is a consumer company. And it is all about the customers out there that rely on us for something that is integral to their lives. And so we, we get a lot of things that we get involved in, finance and technology, but we can never forget that ultimately it's about delivering for the people that count on us, and that means understanding their needs. And so we're constantly reminding you of that yeah. <laughs> as really a group, true. and uh, I certainly reinforce that in our one-on-one -on -one conversations. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's get back to the script, Raquel. Let's get back to get the back script, Hans. Huh? Sounds like you need some reining in sometimes. <laughs> All right. All right, so we've got some consumer questions. Yes. We're going to have Sam Path come up for this. Yeah, where is he? Let's see. It's you. Oh, it come on up, Sam Path. Yeah. Starting with you. All right. So, Sam Path, we're going to ask... You can't read the questions. Oh, She's reading the questions. <laughs> She's reading the questions. <laughs> okay. So, we're in our wireless space. What is Verizon's growth engine in the long run outside of the phone net ads and FWA? Yeah. Look, the phone business is all dependent on us having the phone connection because that's the gateway to the relationship. If you have the phone, then you get the tablets. If you have the tablets, you get the watch. If you have the watch, you get other services. So phone is the gateway. You yeah. cannot win this business without positive phone net ads. So that's one. The second piece, of course, is FWA and the Fios business that goes together with mobile and home. But the third is adjacent services, which we tend to do a really good job of. TMP, a warranty product, is almost a $4.5 billion product for us and growing. Streaming services, another product. Getting more operation in the home, you know, around security and other things. There's a huge amount of growth in that. But at the end of the day, we want to increase the size of our ARPA, average revenue per account. We keep growing that. We grew 5.5% last year, so we have good momentum there, but we've got to keep continue growing that back on these three little vectors. Yes. Absolutely. And maybe we can say that also, I think it's important because the more, when it comes to the consumer wireless market, it's coming to a saturation. So retention becomes a little bit more important than it has been previously, previously been. And I think you work a lot with both the retention, but also the acquisition. And that combination becomes extremely important when you want to get even more service on top of it. Yeah, because it's a saturated market. Yeah. And, and the second thing is, you know, people keep asking us, why don't you offer everything you offer our new customers to our base? Yeah. You know, people ask, why don't you go Oprah style and give a to everyone, you, know, you get a new phone, you get a new phone. Why don't you do that? Everyone asks us that. But the question, it comes down to personalization. There are some customers who don't want an upgrade. You know, like my wife, she has an iPhone 12. She's like, please get out of my business. I'm happy with it. So we are doing a lot of personalization yeah. to ensure that we are able to target customers at a segment of one level. And some customers, we give them upgrades much yeah. faster. Some we give lower. But it all comes down to also managing economics. Cost of acquisition, cost of retention. We monitor that number. Frank and I monitor that every yeah. week. And it and goes together with your decentralization also that you need to be more segmented, and more local because of that market, which you did last year, which I think everybody here is more than aware of. It's good. Yeah, a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sam Pat. All right.
right. Well, it looks like we have one minute left, Hans. Oh, we have one minute left. Do you want to ask another question? I'll ask one more. All right, let's see. We well, have... We have always done a little bit more time. This is fine. We have a couple of questions about 5G strategy. Yeah, question... take, take Joe. He's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yo! Come on, Joe. He has a suit today, you see that? Yeah. It looks good, it looks good. And he's much quicker than before. These shoes don't fit that well anymore. <laughs> no, okay. But you're much quicker now, your, your, yeah. knee, your knee is better. Not as fast as Sampath. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I know. I aspire to yeah, be as yeah. fast as Sampath. <laughs> All right, Joe, your question is about how our 5G strategy is evolving and moving to standalone. Do you see it moving in that direction? And how are we going to take advantage of all eight currencies that 5G promised? Okay, good. It's a good question. Excellent. Um, Excellent question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let, me, let me give a little context to everybody out there in the V team. So um, first, our 5G strategy, we are full steam ahead, right? Um, we've been talking about deploying our ultra-wideband network aggressively, and our customers are super excited and responding. We see step-ups, we see better gross ads, we see better churn wherever we've deployed our C-band, ultra-wideband network. Um, and I've been saying over the past couple of months that in the next few months we'll be crossing 250 million customers who have access to that. Now we're down to weeks and days. So in the next few weeks, I suspect, we'll cross that 250 million. Uh, mark, and that's about a year ahead of where we anticipate it to be. So shout out to the network great team work. for a great build. But this, this notion of standalone you just heard in the question, let me describe that. So today our 5G network is in what we call non-standalone mode, which means our 5G ultra-wideband is still anchor, anchored to our 4G network, um, which works great. There's no issue with that. But in order to unleash the next part of 5G, the advanced applications, things like slicing and more IoT and augmented reality, um, we need to move to separate our 4G network and our 5G network, and that's the standalone version. So we already have customers in standalone, and we'll be aggressively deploying that throughout the country this year. Um, with uh, the anticipation by the end of this year that a significant portion of that 250 million will have access to now standalone. And obviously our goal is to get that to all of our ultra-wideband customers over the next couple years, um, which unleashes all sorts of new 5G capabilities and use cases for enterprises, for consumers, et cetera. So we are already unlocking a lot of those eight currencies with fixed wireless access, with our premium plans on ultra wideband but there's a lot more to come as we continue to deploy, deploy those uh, advanced features awesome. thank you Joe good, right. good answer right. good. 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 Thank you. okay as we, we we wrap up now yes okay I think time is out so. <laughs> um, you know what I always do at the end of these sessions the board doesn't know it but uh, they, they're gonna learn so you are the biggest ambassador of our brand, all of you V-teamers. Uh, what you say and how you talk is important. So I always give you the advice what you should do at the dinner table or when you're out walking with friends. What are the things you're going to talk about this time? This can be a long dinner. In my family, it's going to take hours because I'm going to start talking about the board of directors. <laughs> Just telling them how important it is for a company's success that you have that diversity and that competence that we have in the board. And it was important for me and my leadership team to be able to show all the V-teamers uh, how we work with them and how important they are for success. So that's the first. That can take a long time if you go through the CV of all of them, so I would shorten it up a little bit. The second piece, I would, I would actually ask you to talk about our offerings. I would talk about my plan, or fixed wireless access, or segmentation, or perks, and get the feedback from your friends, from your family using it. Is there things we can do even better? And bring that back, because you have in your circle of colleagues, people that can impact that. And I want you to talk about it as a brand ambassador for us. And ultimately, I think you should talk about what you are doing, what is important in your daily work, because people around you would very much care about it. And I think that's what I want you to do. So those three things, next dinner, 
can be long, can be short, can be one dish, can be 14 dishes, whatever. But think about you are the brand ambassador for this company, what you say and how you convey it and how you bring back also feedback from your constituency is so important. That makes our company being better. So I thank you in advance for that long dinner or for the friend's walk you're gonna do. Please do it. Yes. Raquel. Yes. And can I, add, can I add a quick dessert to that meal, maybe? Maybe a little nice dessert yeah. would be to follow us on Inside Verizon, on social. I know that you have your social accounts at Hans. So Fresh that's Park. a nice dessert, meaning follow me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a good way to be a brand ambassador to yeah. stay informed and yeah. you can reshare. And that's, that's like the most organic way now that we share content with our friends and family yeah. on social True. media. So, I think that's a, a good dessert, right? Yeah, that's a good dessert. Okay. All right. Well, this was fun. This was fun. Right? Okay. <laughs> so that's a wrap. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Till next time, you're up Thank to you. Thank you.